Today we'll be talking about a feed screw and uh, how to create a feed screw using our add-in. Uh, if you don't know what a feed screw is, it is basically a rotating cylinder that pushes an object uh, down an enclosure or a shaft. Uh, if you Google it and you type in feed screw, you will uh, come across some images of what it looks like. Now, these shapes can be organic like fruit or veg or it can be synthetic like bottles. And this is the one that we're going to focus on today. Uh, the net result of what we want to see is going to look like this and I um, uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Our goal with the screencast is to show you how to create a feed screw that will push a squarish shape uh, along the shaft. Now uh, to create a feed screw using our add-in you need four things. Uh, number one, a profile of the bottle or the solid shape that will be pushed along. So in this case, I've got this shape that, that looks like this. Uh, number two, we need a shaft from which the material will be cut, uh, which I've got specified over here. And then number three, we need a helix or a path which will define the feed rate. Okay, so we can see that the bottle will be going um, at this, using this particular feed rate. There's one more thing we need, which is a point of rotation about which the bottle may rotate. And this is typically the case for non-round bottles. If we want to stick a label on the left-hand side here, uh, we would want the bottle to be able to rotate so that, so that a, some uh, machine can, can uh, stick that uh, uh, label on there for us. All right. Now, on the screen here, uh, I've got the shape that I'm interested in. And uh, to process the shape, I don't need the complete bottle. So you'll notice that if I rotate this, I don't actually have the, the bottle or the cap or, or uh, anything like that. I've only got a cross section which represents how the bottle would interact with the shaft. Now this can be a, a rotated or a revolved profile, that's fine. But um, really we don't want to include all of the details because that will incur a significant performance hit. So um, if we take this bottle that we have um, and uh, uh, we, we model it, um, this is the result that we would end up with. All right, now I'm going to, to use this, so let's fire up our add-in. And um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the uh, button on the top left-hand corner here and activate the add-in. All right, so um, what we want to do then is we want to select the shaft, the helix. Um, next is going to be my input body, and then lastly, my rotation point. The defaults that have been set on the add-in gives us a preview that we can see here. I might want to rotate my body about a 90 degree angle. What you'll also notice is that I've got two planes that are currently visible here. Now, the reason we have that is because we want to trim off the net result after that. And you need to take this into account for the overall scroll length. I will talk about this in another video tutorial uh, where we can see how the, the, the planes uh, impact the final output. But for now, I'm going to work with the defaults. So I will say that we want to go with the 90 degree angle and um, I will just accept them as they are. And I'm going to hit the OK button. Once I hit the OK button, we can see that there's a nice progress bar that comes up. I don't want to bore you to death, so I'm going to pause the video right now and I will resume when it's done. OK, so we can see that the final output that has been generated uh, looks something like this. And uh, notice that if we have a look at this profile, then this profile uh, matches the uh, rotation angles of the profile as it is pushed along the shaft. So eventually we're going to end up with a flat profile on the right hand side here. In the next tutorial I will talk about how to get uh, a better shape so that we see um, how the profile moves from 0 degrees to 90 degrees and how it is reflected inside of the shaft after it's been cut.